as we step into this night and into this season, I want to pause again, as we did on Sunday, to lift up the people of Ukraine. Our sisters and brothers in, the, in Ukraine are mostly Christian. Over 70% are Eastern Orthodox in their faith practice. And for those who may know, the Eastern Orthodox do not recognize Ash Wednesday. They have Clean Monday, which is coming up this Monday. I kind of like that. Um, you clean your house, you clean your life, you clean your slate and begin the Great Lent. So we are thinking of them tonight. My stole has the Orthodox cross on it, and my cross is from the Coptic Orthodox Church. So we are holding them in our hearts as we come together tonight. And I ask again that we pause in silence before stepping into this time. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The first time I met Larry Trexler 37 years ago, the scar on his forehead stood out noticeably. It was an indentation about one inch above his eyebrow line, and it was deep in the center of his head. Larry was quiet. He was pleasant, kind, and thoughtful. And as one of the members of my first church said, Larry is a man of prayer. The scar was so noticeable that it begged questions, but Somehow I heard the voice of my mom saying, do not ask, do not ask. So I stopped the first time. And I tried not to stare at the scar. A few weeks later, Larry called and asked if we could meet. Of course, I said. And we met in my office. And as he sat down, he told me that he wanted to tell me a story about how the Lord's Prayer had saved his life. He went on to describe a night a few years before when he was 27 and he was closing the convenience store that he managed on the west side of Cleveland and as he went to close the front door, a man with a gun came in and pointed it at his head. He was robbing the store and he said, give me everything you had. Larry was scared to death, but did everything that the man demanded gave him, and gave him $200. Then the man tied him up, pointed the gun at Larry's temple, and said, goodbye to this life. Say goodbye to this life. He bowed his head, and he started to pray the Lord's Prayer. A single shot was fired, and the man fled. Somehow, miraculously, Larry opened his eyes to realize he was still alive as he laid in the pool of blood on the floor. And he continued his story with this. Reverend Tim, it was only the prayer that saved me. It was the only prayer I could think of in the moment of terror before I died. Because I tilted my head down, and started praying the Lord's Prayer, the way the bullet entered saved me. I only got to the words, Our Father, before the shot was fired. Reverend Tim, it was a miracle. My life was saved by God. My life was saved by our Father. When I awoke, he said, I gave my life to God since he had spared my life. I pray the Lord's Prayer constantly. That prayer has led me to faith and a life of devotion. I am grateful for every minute of every day that I have life. And I'm here today to ask you, 
How can I work with you to serve God and the church? And so we began our journey of prayer and devotion. Larry teaching me how to pray. You know, when you come out of Yale, you think you know how to pray because they told you that with the degree. But I knew nothing. And he taught this young pastor what prayer looked like. Called the Pastor Nader, the, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer has saved many lives through the years. I'm living testimony to that. Perhaps you are too. With only 64 words, the Pastor Nader is the prayer given by Jesus to his disciples when they asked him, how do we pray? As his disciples, this prayer is our prayer too. This is the prayer he gave them. This is our prayer as well. Pastor Nada really is a total prayer. It concern, its concerns embrace the whole world, from the coming of the kingdom of God to daily bread, large things and small things, spiritual things and material things, inward things and outward things. Nothing is beyond the purview of this prayer. It is lifted to God in every conceivable setting. It rises from altars of great cathedrals and from obscure shanties in distant lands. It is spoken by children and kings, by paupers and princes. The soldiers and citizens of Ukraine fighting for their lives this day for freedom are praying this prayer at this hour as we worship. And Christians across the globe are praying this prayer today and tonight as well. In, in great and small Ash Wednesday services. It is prayed at weddings and on deathbeds. It is prayed by Nobel laureates and noble illiterates. It is everyone's prayer. For me, it was the first prayer I learned as a child. I found out at an early age, at about three years old, that I wasn't allowed to talk in church, which was really troubling to me, and so, I learned that the people who were talking were saying one thing over and over and over again. So I learned the prayer. I didn't learn it well and I didn't learn it right, but I was able to talk in church. And from those first days of prayer and worship, that prayer has changed my life. It's the first prayer I pray every morning when I rise. It's the last prayer I pray each night. How about you? How is the Lord's Prayer part of your life? The Lord's Prayer is essentially a petitionary prayer. It's a prayer of asking. Adoration is present at both the beginning and the end of the prayer, but petition is the heart of the prayer. Seven perfectly crafted requests, three of which are entreaties to God for help. God, help me. Give me daily bread. God, help me. Forgive me, and forgive me for what I have done so that I may be forgiven and forgive others. God, deliver me from all temptation and evil. Give and forgive and deliver. Add to these the coming of the kingdom of God on earth, the will of God to be done on earth, and glory and power come together, all coming from and returning to God. There you have over the next seven sermons, Emily and I will unpack the Lord's Prayer line by line, phrase by phrase. We will do this through preaching, and then again, we will look at writings on prayer, and we'll go beyond the prayer as we study prayer and as we pray together through this Lenten season. All of this is at your fingertips, this prayer of ours. On this Ash Wednesday, when we are called into the heart of confession and prayer, I want to call on each one of us to deepen our life of prayer. To pray is to change. Prayer is a great grace. Prayer is a gift from God to give us a pathway whereby our lives can be overtaken by love and joy, peace and justice patience and kindness, goodness 
and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The movement begins with inward steps because without interior change in our hearts and minds, transfer, transformation cannot take place. If we cannot be still, if we cannot be humble, if we cannot be open, we cannot be changed, and we cannot become a new person with a new perspective. Prayer opens all of this portal. Prayer opens our hearts. Prayer stops us and instills in us the need for transformation. As we step into Lent, I ask that each one of us give ourselves over to prayer. Think of Larry so many years ago, who bowed his head in the midst of facing his moment of death, and all he could say before the shot was fired was, Our Father, and woke up alive with a bullet one centimeter from his brain. This maybe is too brutal a visual for too many to grasp, but consider Sojourner and Harriet. Consider Coretta and Martin. Consider Mother Teresa and Bishop Tutu. Consider your mother and father. Consider your grandmother and grandfather, your children, yourself, on your knees, talking to God. In the end, that is all prayer is about. It is about talking to God. Each of us needs to stop worrying about being perfect in prayer and simply pray as we can, not as we can't. Stop worrying. Start praying. We need to talk to God. We need to start with a simple prayer. We begin right where we are without pause, without judgment of ourselves, and I think we're hardest on ourselves when it comes to prayer, or listening to the judgment of anyone else listening in. If you're just beginning, you may not have a prayer. Your prayer may start something like this. To whom it may concern, I guess I'll call you God, but I'm not really sure about all that. I've never talked to you before. And I'm not really sure where you are or who you are, but I know there's something out there, something beyond myself, something outside of my daily existence that needs a source of light and life and hope beyond myself. I know that something is missing in my life. I'm not sure what that something is. I only know that it might involve you. I'm not sure how to say this, but it might have to do with words like words that I've never said, like I'm sorry, or let me try something new, or I love you. I know I'm stubborn. I know I'm easily distracted, and I know I'm self-centered. I know I need help. I know I need something more than I have right now, so please help me. Goodbye. That's how it happens. Just take a breath and pray. In time, that prayer may take on more words, more feeling, more conversation, and eventually, possibly, and hopefully, a conversion of your heart. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. For today, let's just start talking to God. Simply start. That will help. So here we go. Our Father. Amen.